This will kill the MCU forever. What could it possibly be? But before I get into this, let's talk about the build-up to how we ended up in the middle of a multi-billion dollar franchise that is actively fumbling the biggest bag I have ever seen. As we all know, the MCU launched with Iron Man 1 in 2008, and after that, Phase 1 of the MCU involved five more projects that were critical to becoming the foundation of what became the Infinity Saga. One of the most important parts of this phase was not just the climax, but the post-climax which involved the introduction of Thanos at the end of Avengers. The only matter I do not take seriously, boy, is you. While many Phase 1 projects weren't amazing, the worst of Phase 1 is often compared to what Phase 4 is now, and, and with a nearly 20 year gap in potential quality, this leaves a big question of how Marvel has regressed so far. Anyways, after Phase 1, we were given Phase 2, and Age of Ultron's climax also led us straight to a post credit scene including Thanos. Fine. I'll do it myself. At this point, the potential for Marvel was higher than ever, and everything was going amazing. The hype for Avengers Infinity War had officially begun. Once we hit Civil War, Phase 3 begun, and the MCU began its line of the most amazing comic book movies I have ever seen in my entire life. Movies like Civil War, Black Panther, Thor Ragnarok, Avengers Infinity War, and all of these movies eventually led to Avengers Endgame, the most amazing climax in any saga ever, finishing off 20 plus projects in the making, giving us the most sad satisfying ending we could have ever asked for. So how has what once was an amazing franchise that was loved by not just fans but also critics who are harder to please become something that is extremely controversial and many people don't like anymore? I mean, how do the letters MCU go from being an acronym that everyone loves to an acronym that everyone questions when they hear it? How is the bias for a franchise that was so incredible now so poor? Well, as many of us know, it was a change in direction for the MCU. After Avengers Endgame, the only project left was Spider-Man Far From Home, and then we jumped right into Phase 4. A lot of fans were questioning what Marvel could bring to the table after the climax of the Infinity Saga, but many people were excited, not knowing what to expect, and very ready for new Marvel content. Instead, poor creative writing decisions, rushed ideas, and a lack of passion led us to whatever the MCU is now, and left many people disappointed. So, as many of us already know, Phase 4 was insanely oversaturated with content. We got the normal amount of movies for a post-Ultron Marvel phase, but with 11 other projects all squished into just two years. Even as a huge fan of other comic book projects, I and many other people could tell that this phase was doomed to fail the minute it was released. After the initial excitement passed, as more and more projects began to release, people started realizing just how devastating this could be to the cinematic universe that we all knew and loved. I mean, ever wonder why the hype for TV shows consistently decreased steadily after WandaVision? Sure, there were projects that were more talked about than others, for example, Moon Knight over Miss Marvel, but the talk about the next big Marvel project really stopped after Loki. I know that generally this type of hype would only be matched with movies, but this isn't just some genre of TV show content. These are Marvel shows, with some of them having budgets of over a hundred million dollars per episode, and with that being said, Marvel failed on nearly every front of these TV shows completely. Even the best ones were just kind of there relative to the grades of media. I mean, at least for me, even the best of the MCU shows aren't in my top 5 or even my top 10. That's literally crazy considering Avengers Infinity War is in my top 3 movies of all time. But the impact of quantity over quality didn't just destroy the excitement of Phase 4 for a bunch of people, it also destroyed the hopes of many aspiring visual artists that were super excited to get into that line of work. The issue with the fatigue of Phase 4 projects wasn't that there was just too many, it was that each project took from multiple aspects of each other and caused major overlaps in resources. The CGI, the editing, the writing, and the pacing all suffered so much more than they should have. I could go so far into detail about all of the little aspects of Phase 4 for, but I'm sure you've seen a million examples and would agree that these issues stand without an in-depth commentary needed. Can you see me? Uh, floating here, Lily. It's Astrid. Heimdallsson. Astrid, are you okay? I no longer go by the name Astrid. Now known as the MCU is a universe, literally, like, it, it, it's in the name, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Every single project from every single phase before Phase 4 has felt like it's taken place in a universe. At the climax of every single phase, we've been met with an insanely awesome team-up of all of the characters living their own stories, and every single one of these individual stories has come together to give us an amazing final battle at the end of each phase. This leaves us with a satisfying climax every phase, and soft resets the plot to set up for the next 
Big Bad. First, it was Loki, then Ultron, and eventually it was Thanos. When countering hate against Phase 4, people often say, give it time, they're building a new universe right now like Phase 1, except here's the thing. Phase 4 doesn't have any interconnected stories. We were given absolutely zero large-scale projects at the end of Phase 4, which required any of the characters to come together. And the characters that were connected were just completely different, like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was just Wanda chasing around a nerf Doctor Strange, and Black Widow was exactly the story we didn't want. I mean, Clint wasn't even in it. And don't even get me started on Thor Love and Thunder, because the Guardians being in that movie for 10 minutes does not count. Anyways, you get the point. Phase 4 was completely disconnected. No other project even talked about the giant Tiamat in the middle of the ocean from Eternals. And no, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and She-Hulk both don't count. I know Captain America New World Order is gonna be about that same celestial, but Marvel's relying way too hard on the potential of the unknown future. They're not giving us the satisfaction that we deserve in this phase. Every MCU project can't solely be a setup for projects five years away. Many of the projects we're getting now deserve to be their own art, meant to be a story that works as a part of a larger universe, but also fits into its own frame. Alright, anyways, this entire video, I've kind of just given my very strong opinions about the failures of Marvel in the past, but haven't actually really addressed the title, what could kill the MCU forever? And the honest answer to this is hope, or better yet, a lack of. Hope is one of the most important emotions that anyone could ever have. Hope keeps people alive, it keeps people fighting, it can keep franchises alive as well. Take a look at Star Wars for example, after The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, a lot of people lost hope in Star Wars. But recently, after the creation of The Mandalorian and Andor, a new hope has arisen in the fan base of Star Wars as well. You can definitely argue that Star Wars isn't the same and the franchise lost many fans after the horrid acts of creating the last trilogy, but after these mistakes, Star Wars has finally begun to head in the right direction and finally given the fans what they want and put time and effort into the projects that they're releasing. Andor and Mandalorian have been far better than any MCU TV show ever, and that's because Lucasfilm is now focusing on a handful of amazing characters, not just plethora of random characters that many people do not like, at least the live action versions. Mandalorian just begun, it's season 3, and is still as amazing as ever. And god would I kill for a season 2 of Moon Knight instead of whatever the f*** She-Hulk was. Even past Star Wars, movies like The Batman left people feeling so inspired that they wanted to literally become Batman after the movies. I mean, leaving the cinemas for that movie, I felt incredibly excited for the future of DC, and I just don't feel that with Marvel anymore. Circling back to hope, I think that many fans can relate to this, but we are losing hope in the MCU. Many fans have already lost hope, and many fans are hanging by a thread trying so damn hard to maintain the hope for some higher power project after project. I think recently I've just felt a little more destroyed every time I've left the theater or finished an episode of Phase 4 and now Phase 5. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, and the MCU movies and TV shows aren't making nearly as much money as they should be considering the incredible casting that they have on their back. And I think for many people, myself included, the last hope was Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. We all knew that Kang was going to be the next big bad, and we just needed to be sure that they nailed Kang perfectly, except I don't think that they did. I think Ant-Man still failed to give us what we deserved after all of the hype we were given after Loki and all the talks about Kang being all-powerful. And I'm still extremely hopeful for Kang's future in the MCU, but I feel like I've lost hope for any project that doesn't pertain directly to him anymore. Besides Thunderbolts, because Steven Yoon is gonna be in it and Glenn was amazing in The Walking Dead. I feel like every other project is just a filler to introduce new characters that lead up to Kang Dynasty and eventually Secret Wars, and I feel like Marvel is so low lost in the world of making another Avengers Infinity War endgame that they're forgetting to give all of the Iron Mans and Captain Americas of our time the work that they deserve. The solo projects deserve the love and passion that the MCU once had, it shouldn't all just be leading up to something insanely large. So I guess the final question is how does Marvel save the MCU? Well, it's a really simple question with a very complicated answer. At the end of the day, Marvel can only do so much to save the MCU, and what they really need is the fan base. The only thing that Marvel can do is bring back the passion into their world and pray that spark of hope comes back that the fans once had. Everything comes down to what the fans want and enjoy, and recently Marvel has lost sight of that for long-term gain. Marvel needs to regain that balance of short-term enjoyment and future potential perfectly the way they displayed it in Phase 3. We deserve projects like Captain America Civil War while also consecutively leading up to projects like Infinity War and Endgame. Even though the last two to three years have been horrible for the future of the MCU, there's still a huge opportunity for Marvel going forward. They didn't do Ant-Man justice in Quantumania, but they didn't destroy Kang to the point of no return. Before I say anything, I'll just say I doubt any person in power would ever care what a random 19-year-old has to say, but this is just what I would do. First of all, I would reflect. 
Marble higher-ups need to have an honest, self-aware conversation about themselves and look back at what works and what doesn't. Give us the writing of Moon Knight with the action of Shang-Chi and the visuals of Eternals. Completely cut out the projects like She-Hulk until they're ready to be made the right way. She-Hulk is an incredible character in the comics, and by bringing her into this live-action world, they didn't do her justice at all. And if they're gonna ruin these characters, they might as well just avoid bringing them in altogether. Next, directors need to cut out everything that they're not sure will work. I understand that companies have to take risks, but I would argue that it's very, very apparent what the fans actually want in the MCU, leading me to the next step that Marvel needs to take. Listen to the fans. Stop treating your own fandom as trash by feeding us narcissistic directors viewpoints about how the fans are terrible people for disliking She-Hulk. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the portrayal of powerful female characters. We absolutely love characters like Wanda, Gamora, and Black Widow, but making these new female characters unlikable and then blaming all of the haters for being sexist will destroy your audience, especially when so many people criticizing She-Hulk are women. Also, Marvel needs to give projects time between release dates when greenlighting projects. They should all be spread out, at least far enough to the point where there's no recent overlap. Hawkeye's final episodes came out at the same time as Spider-Man No Way Home, and this should not be happening. Give the project space to breathe. Anyways, next up. Put passionate writers behind your projects. People that care about the characters are so much more likely to do justice to them rather than giving us writers with weird political agendas or writers that have no understanding of the characters whatsoever. Take the Russo brothers, for example. They had so much passion for Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, and they did it so well. Or even better, James Gunn. The reason I can almost guarantee that Guardians 3 will be the best of Phase 5 is because James Gunn truly loves the characters he's working with and always does the characters justice. And I'm sure he's going to do the same for the DC Universe now. If Marvel is to successfully follow all these steps, the hope that we so dearly need will finally begin to return, and the hope will turn into joy as we sit in our seats enjoying a large bucket of popcorn and watching peak movies the way we did in 2018.